Hey, man. Hey, how you doing, Scott? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Sound okay? My 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 webcam. I can't use. I got to use the regular camera. For some reason, it's not working. So this is fine, though, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, right. hey, thanks for agreeing to talk to me. Um, sure. I never. I don't think I've ever actually physically met you. <laughs> so this I'm is what. Like, no. Uh. Uh-uh. No. I mean, I, I saw you a bunch, and I don't. I don't know why I never just came up and said hey, but I saw no. you about a time ago. Well, I'm dangerous. You gotta, you gotta be careful. You know, I'm a dangerous guy. Yeah, you look kind of scary. So I, I just yeah. kind of, I stayed away. And those other guys said, "Yeah, you uh, my dog too. My dog might attack you." Yeah, he's very fearsome looking. What do they say? Uh, discretion is the better part of value, valor. But something along those lines. Best to play it safe. Talk yeah. from well, this. Yeah, that must have been what I was thinking 30 years ago or whatever it was. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, well, hey, thanks for agreeing to talk to me. Um, yeah, thanks so, for so, really, so really quick, I just, you know, I, I had a book come out last year, at the end of last year, and I knew I wasn't going to be able to do a whole lot uh, as far as trying to let people know about it. And I just thought I'd start like a YouTube sort of thing and just talk to various people that I liked that uh-huh. were either in the book or not, not in the book. The book's about trying to hustle and be some doing some semblance of uh, either self-employment or partial self-employment or really chasing your dreams and all that other kind of stuff. What's it called? It's called self and punishment. I have to, I have to read it. I'd like to read well, that. Well, I'll have to get you a copy because I think you'll probably enjoy it. Can I time. buy it? There's a place to buy it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather pay for it. You know, I'm a rock star, so I got money. Just I don't even know what to do with all my money. Okay, well, here's a great place to spend twenty dollars if, you, if you're uh, right. money. So um, I'll send you a link when it's done. But um, anyway, so how are you doing? I, I know this that you just put out your uh, brand new record a couple uh-huh. of days ago. Yeah, and I really, I really liked it. And I just kind of want to ask you a few questions about that and then a few other questions about some other stuff and see how it goes and that kind of thing. Um, All right. Okay. So um, uh, when did you record this record? I I saw that you recorded it at the Blasting Room and stuff. How long ago was that? Oh, God. Probably a a year ago. I I haven't, I don't know how to put stuff out anymore. You know, it's like I tried a bunch of different ideas and finally, Finally, like a friend of mine uh, here in town, well, he's actually the the, the son of a, of a good friend of mine. Do you know who Dave Fridman is? He's a record producer. He's the guy that recorded the Flaming Lips, and I think he, he, might have Lips. he did Sleater Kenny and so like He lives here in this little town, and we've known each other for a hundred years. And I've known his kids since they were kids, you know, and. Uh, they're not kids anymore. They're, they're big. Uh, yeah. And his son, Mike was like, he's just a good guy. And I trust him. And he, he's got a, a, a little la- label, but it's not really, a, it's more just helping me get stuff up. And, and uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, um, oh, crud. I'm having a brain fart. What's the name of his label? Um, I can look it up. Hold on. Yeah. I, I, ever since yeah. I, uh, uh, n- 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 what the hell is it? No, no, I don't have the thing around here. Oh, wait. I got a CD right over here. Yeah, he, okay. I, I'm really embarrassed if he's if he watches this. I'll be sure. To no, I know it's non-existent record. And and it's spelled wrong on purpose. Non-existent. Come on. <sighs> yeah, and so he he's smart and good at that kind of stuff. So he helped me do all the digital stuff. And then my girlfriend, Janet and I, uh, did this, this, do the CDs and, you know, I wish people bought CDs, but you know, people want the digital. And so since I'm old and I don't know what I'm doing, I needed somebody young who does to, you know, <laughs> well, I, I'm old and I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm still going to do it. So I'm, I'm I keep trying to connect the dots. I noticed in your musical, yeah. uh, your musical uh, history and everything that you've done, um, 
especially now in terms of like how things are done it's generally like online online kind of letting right. people know that you exist and that's what i do all the time you know yeah. so it's kind of weird um <laughs> it, i look at it like it's a matter of just trying to connect the dots like there's an audience right. out obviously but it's like how do you reach them now and today's age and that's only something i have a hard time doing and yeah. also partially i'm nauseated i'm kind of nauseated by the idea of like sticking my face out there in, in the uh non-real world of the internet you know um yeah, it's scary yeah it's like i know you have instagram you have all that kind of crap that everybody sort of needs to have and it's just this matter of connecting the dots and, yeah and um, i sort of do i do it wrong you know and uh i'm just now trying to figure out how to do it right like i'm trying to do like like I've been doing Facebook, which is the old people's version of the internet. And then I do it like with uh, just like a, my own account. So like a lot of people, I have a lot of friend requests that I, I can't because you only get 5,000. So that limits it because people like, I mean, you still get word to them, but it's not the same. So then uh, my girlfriend the other day or the other week or whatever built me a cool guy account for like the people that ex exist on the on the web in a, in a more uh, uh, i don't know what i'm trying to say but you know non, what I mean. non facebook kind of way yeah like like more of a business like hey i do music and i do paintings and you know uh so we got that going now and uh you know, because well, like with the other one, I, I end up saying a bunch of stupid shit. And then my my girlfriend, Janet, will go like, hey, you know, that's alienating or that's you got a big mouth or she doesn't scold me. I mean, she knows that I have certain things that I'm marginally passionate about or extremely. And, and but I get I used to get in a lot of fights, you know, about with dumb people and get in these big circular sure. things where, where nobody listens to each other and you just fight all day. And then I can't sleep because I'm pissed off and I'm trying not to do that anymore. Oh, oh, you mean like when you like see what's going on in the world and you can't help but just sort of write about, man, what the fuck is going on here? And then you feel kind of stupid afterwards for even- Well, no, what, what happens is, is, is I, I say what's going on here and this is what I think. And then somebody will come on and say, well, here's what I think. And then what they think is fucking stupid. And you go, well, that's fucking stupid. You know, you're getting a big, it's really hard to, when somebody says something completely ignorant or whatever, it's hard for me not to type hard, you know? Oh yeah. And, so, and, it's been, and there was so much of it, so much of it in the last year going into this year with the pandemic and everything. Oh God, and, and it's something. And it, hey, it's crazy. don't get me started. You know what I mean? But uh, I, I'll the, just say that um, it's been a very interesting year obviously mm. and uh yeah I, and i've learned uh especially um lately that the best thing i can do is just not be as informed as i could which is really hard because I'm yeah 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 it's like when we handed over when we handed over the reins to a guy who's not my first choice but who's not insane and who's not the most horrible human being that ever lived right. i was like you know what i'm gonna take i'm still paying attention and i'm watching but but uh, I got to stop fighting with people. You know, when we were doing the Trump thing, it was just like, you know, he was the, at any given time, the loudest, stupidest person in the room. Like, even if, even if you were the type of person who didn't find his personal politics and his everything completely contemptible, didn't it bother you that he was so dumb? You know, that kind of thing. So I would get in these big arguments with people who weren't listening and I wasn't listening. Strangers. To yeah. And we weren't listening to each other. We were just saying mean things. And uh, the, the the upshot, the whole point of this whole thing was that I, it's not, it's not, it's not good business. I'm not like, Hey, Scott, do you have a record out? Oh, I'll tell you in a minute. I'm arguing with some Trump asshole over here for two days, you know? Right, and, right. and so now I got people who are smarter than me helping me like, do what I'm supposed to do, you know, like promote, promote your, uh, who you are and, and your expression and, and leave, and then I, then leave I, the sides of, yeah. Right. I, That's why 
I have people who are smarter than me going, hey, you know, why don't you chill and we'll take care of this, you know? So mostly now I, I'm just, just still writing music yeah. and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you, I mean, you definitely have, you have this niche of people that really like what you do. Yeah. So now it's kind of like your, it's your job now or has been to try to connect the dots, like I was saying, to try to find those people that remember you from, you know, I I, I don't really know exactly how long ago it all was, but I know that years. Say, that's what you hear about probably uh, a good deal of the time and you're still friends with those guys or whatever. So now it's a matter of like reaching these people because- Well, there's like, those people, but the thing is there's also, like the way I do songs now is the way I've always done them. I, I, yeah. I like I don't I haven't changed anything it's like people go oh you're doing an, an, the the acoustic versions and it's like those are the versions like when I write a song that's what they sound like when I show up to practice with whatever band I go here's my new song and it sounds like that right yeah. and, then it, and then whatever band it is turns it into you know if it's the pavers or the uh, that's part that's part of what I love about being in a band is 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 doing shit like that so um you know, now it's a matter of like, how can I make a new record when I'm locked in my house and I don't, you know, and, and I made, I go, well, I'll just fucking play my guitar. And then Bill's like, well, why don't you come out and record and we'll, we'll drink whiskey and have fun and record a record. And we did, you know, and the point I was getting at was it's not just looking for people who are all types or, or, or whatever. It's like my mother actually likes this record, you know, and, uh people like it that that don't have never heard of punk rock or anything else like i feel like i could actually sell this record to uh some normal people you know oh yeah and, definitely and well, what, well what you do i mean like i i agree with what you say about your songwriting because like like i guess this new record it's like a combination of some new stuff and some old stuff put together yeah. well that's always like that's always how you've uh, written and I don't I can't think of anybody that sounds like your style or just how you write songs you're you're kind of out there alone I think I mean just well see on. that's 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 the whole thing Chihuahua and Buffalo I didn't have this radio and got it to look up so yeah, yeah. But I'm not being it Chihuahua and Buffalo the whole if I have a little explanation of why it's called Chihuahua and Buffalo and 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 the the reason is that like I, I got this dog, Justin Bieber, and he's a Chihuahua and he has very little hair. And I, uh, he was born in Texas. Sorry, buddy. Lie down. Sorry. Uh, he was born in Texas. And he, for the first however long of his life, he was uh, warm <laughs> and happy. And uh, then I got a divorce and the kids moved out and I, said, well, I'm going to move back home to Buffalo because my mom's there. I was living in, I was living in my, uh, <clears throat> well, I was living on couches and stuff. Like when I got a divorce, I, this is getting pretty convoluted, but whatever. I'll get back to the point if I remember uh, what it was. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. We're, we're having right. a conversation. <laughs> when I got the divorce, I wasn't ready, uh, and I stayed and I was, I got really depressed and I stayed in this two bedroom apartment and, you know, I didn't know how to sign another lease. So I was paying for this two bedroom apartment and I spent all my money and I didn't make enough money. And then I was homeless. And then I was, uh, you know, I was living on couches and sleeping in my car and I was, for quite a while. And finally I was like, you know what? Fuck this. Go home. Mom's my mom's in her eighties and she needs you know we need each other so i went home and now i'm here and the upshot the thing that i'm getting at is jb came with me justin bieber came with me and he uh is stuck in buffalo so he's like this dog that's like you know well uh, i've got this new situation i gotta figure it out right yeah and i found that to be a, a pretty fitting metaphor for my musical situation it's like like you said there's nothing out there like what i'm doing there might be 
but well, I, have I, found, I haven't found it. And I end up like I have played, I've opened for Pennywise with my, with my nylon string guitar. I did a tour of Australia with, with the anti flag. And, you know, I, I had never heard their music or anything. I don't even know how I ended I, up. On I've them. never, I've never heard them and I've never heard. Well, their, their, their stuff is very political political but in a gen in a general sense it's not like the clash political where it's very got kind of specific you know spanish bombs in andalucia or whatever it's like super like let's do stuff that's good everything's bad you know kind of stuff like and it's it's super like, like the righteous like like the clash have that sort of righteousness that like the mc5 had where it's like we're the good guys and they're the bad guys and kick out the jams motherfucker we're all in this yeah, together but they also uh, especially Joe Strummer were very specific. They they, they were they they like I said they talk about uh, like straight to hell they you know uh, they talk about Cambodia and you know, like they 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 whereas and once again I'm <laughs> meandering but Anti Flag is more like giant fight songs as opposed to like you know yeah so so they're like this bombastic fight fight songs and. Uh, every night there in Australia, there'd be um, like maybe a metal band, yeah, and, and then a straight up punk rock band, and then yeah. I'd go on with a with a nylon string guitar. <laughs> I would bring a bottle of whatever whiskey they give me and just go out with my guitar and just it was terrifying. And then comes on this giant like, how's everybody doing? You know, let's save the world. You know, and I was singing Maria's an Easter egg, right? And uh, <laughs> and it actually went over fine. It went over well. I actually did when I opened for Pennywise. It was good too, which was weird. But like, my point is that like JB is a bald four pound Chihuahua yeah. stuck in the freezing cold in Buffalo, and he's like, I don't, I don't fit here. Now I'm gonna need a sweater. I gotta figure some shit out. That is a perfect metaphor for me. I go like, I'm a Chihuahua in Buffalo right now. I'm like. Yeah, it's really cold and I don't have any hair. You know what I mean? And right. so that's why I called it that because I just, there might be a niche out there for me, but even if there is, I got to figure out, you know, how to get them to hear me. Yeah, so, it's like the whole connecting the dots thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's, it's, the whole thing. Planet, it, it's just, I mean, there's probably, uh, there's probably a, a more, um, effective but i can't think of the right word way to do it than just throw shit out and see who you know yeah but, but this is but it's it's like really at this point it's the only way to like really you know because that's it's literally the same thing for me and my art career you know it's yeah. just like it's like uh there's no time for fake modesty you know what you do is is unique to you and maybe not millions of people are going to like it but you know, I mean, that's not even a quality quality statement. It's just a statement. And yeah, if, yeah. so, you know, you see, it doesn't even matter if you're modest or not. You know, what I do might suck, but it's I'm the only one that does it right now, or the only one I know of that does the kind of thing that I do. And I can't, it, th and I just, can't think of anybody. I can't think of anybody that sounds like what you do. Which is like, what, which is like, what kind of well, it's what kind of came to me when I listened to the record after the second time I went through it. Some of the melodies were coming out and stuff, and you have this tendency of of sticking all these words. You have a lot of lyrics, and you're like, oh, it works somehow. And the melody, the melody will come up here and there that gets in your ear, and just the whole thing. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody really sounds like how you write songs. Well, that's I, I appreciate that, and that and that's where the whole Chihuahua and Buffalo comes from. Like, just in music situation in general. I'm a chihuahua in Buffalo. I don't know what, you know, what do I do? Hide in my house or I get out there in the cold and figure it out, you know? And yeah. especially now, especially I mean, now everyone's so limited in what they can do with like, you know, there's, there's the end of the pandemic in sight. Hopefully, you know, yeah, it hopefully. definitely seems to be a lot more positive now than it was last year at this time. That's for sure. So, so all you gotta do is just keep, I guess, keep doing it. Um, keep but anyway, I like the record a lot. And, I appreciate uh, that. I really do. I, I, I've always been a fan of, uh, even though I never actually introduced myself to you 20 whatever years ago, um, 
I always thought that when you came aboard playing with Carl, Stefan, and Bill, that the All Roy's Revenge record was probably, to me, was the best representation of those three guys playing with each other at that point. Like, it seemed like, for me, as a listener of those three guys and the band before that and before that, that when you came aboard, suddenly it just seemed like, and this is no offense to <laughs> to Dave, who I like, of course, or anything like that, because he, yeah. he was fine, but everything just sort of kind of clicked. And so because of that and seeing you guys a bunch around that time, I was always really surprised about how the reception for all was across the board, because every time you guys came to Raleigh or anything like that, there was always a lot of people there. People liked the band as the band all, and not so much worried about what had come before in The Descendants. So I was really surprised to watch the filmage movie and to sort of get a glimpse of, um, I guess, what you guys were up against, because you guys worked your asses off for a long time. That's crazy. And I just, I just had no idea that people were like, well, this guy's not Milo when it's not The Descendants. The, the Descendants were still a relatively recent thing. Yeah, you know? it was weird. It was weird too because the the fi- our shows were bigger than the last Descendants shows before they came back. You know, like the f- yeah. I I opened for them on the final tour, and uh, our shows were by the by the when I quit, our shows were were bigger. You know, you know when yeah. we would when we would co headline with like Bad Religion and you know we played the Vic Theater in Chicago and. St- sold it out that place is huge you know yeah. but but they they went crazy for loser and my age and stuff and then so i think people want what they can't have and and honestly you know for me the, the descendants with milo and all with me are not the same you know people say it's the same thing and to me it's not to me there's i don't i don't think I don't think it sounds the same because uh, we had like we get twenty five percent of the the writing uh, um, em- employees. <laughs> you change twenty five percent of them, and yeah. and then you got to write for the new singer. And there's a new vibe anyway. When you hang out with like when three friends go out, four friends go out, and you go out and one night it's with Bill, and you know he's got that sense of humor, and the next night it's with you know, Hank, and he's, he's got another sense, even that vibe changes, so the, like, like, I never saw it, I didn't really think, like, I don't think if you put on even the last Descendants record with Carl and Stefan, and then you put on All Roy Saves, and you played it for some people, I I don't think they'd go, is that the same band? I think they go, "Uh." so I never really, that narrative always kind of, kind of, and we had we had our crew of people that had shifted with us, but then we had other people that were like, oh, yeah. Like, I think a, a, a lot of the people that ended up coming to those shows had heard that we still do, you know, my engine stuff. So huh. I, don't I don't know. No, well, maybe because I was like a, a fan yeah. throughout, you know, that that was just my opinion. And, um, yeah. And now, look, you know, I can't help but notice now. I mean, not like seeing what people have to say on the internet to any gauge, but it's like now all of a sudden there seems to be, well, not all of a sudden, it's been this gradual thing you said about how people want what they can't have. And now it seems like there's all these people that are just clamoring for a, another all record with singer of your choice. And it's kind of like, were these people around? I mean, yeah. I, keep for, I keep forgetting how much time has passed and how old I am. Yeah. I still kind of yeah, right. Same. Yeah, that, that'll happen. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, wait, I'm 55 years old. Oh, when did that happen? Right. And, you know, like, it seemed like just yesterday when some of these things happened, although I I know, you know, it hadn't. Um, well, how did you end up? You live in Upper State, New York, and that's where you're from, right? Yeah, yeah. How did you, uh, why did you even end up in Los Angeles in the first place and end up meeting those guys? I wanted to play music. I got out of college. I was an art major. See, that's my painting of my grandfather back there. Um, I was an art major, uh, but I really wanted to play music. And I um, got out. I got out of school and was living at my parents' house. And my dad 
I was being a bum. I was working, but I was being a bum. And yeah. my dad was like, you know, dude, you got to figure something out. You can't stay on my couch and eat my Doritos for the rest of your life. So I uh, made a decision. Well, I'm going to, he said, you got to move out. Yeah. And I thought, well, okay, well, I want to play music. That's what I want to do. And it was the big, the punk rock thing back then was real accessible with the, as far as like fanzines and all of that, like. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. I was a big, I was a big fanzine contributor, sort of you were. getting mail yeah. kind of kid. Like that was, yeah, that's what I did for sure. Yeah. Did you do, did you do art for fanzines? Oh yeah. I yeah. drew album covers. I, I drew really bad, badly, primitively drawn album covers for fans right. that like, uh, I did a seven seconds album cover. Like, did you? A well yeah, well-meaning one. It looks they it looks horrible, but it was done with a lot of enthusiasm, and it was the best I could do from I, 1984. You know. Yeah. So, you know. So did did you um did you write letters to people out in Los Angeles? No, did, no. Just went out. What, what happened was uh, my friend Dana, my best friend in the world. He's the one that introduced me to oh. punk rock kind of because I was a big Frank Zappa guy and stuff and. Yeah. Uh, and then I heard, I think DOA bloody but unbowed, and I was like, "Oh, I want to do this." Because I was a Kinks fan, and yeah. and I liked, I liked, I liked the 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 the, the real show tuny dramatic Kinks stuff, but I really liked the old rock stuff. And I thought, well, that's gone now, you know. And then yeah. I heard DOA and I heard the Ramones, and I'm like, "Oh no, it's not. There it is. It's right there. I can yeah. do that," you know. So anyway. I ended up, he, he, Dana had, uh, what do you call this? He was a member of the Descendants mailing list and shit. And he got a thing from Tony Lombardo looking for a singer. And I thought, well, cause I, what I thought was either I had to go to New York or Los Angeles, just got to go to one or the other because either, either you can fuck around and go to Buffalo or, or whatever, or you can go where they make records and, you know, and I, I liked some of the New York hardcore stuff. And I thought, you know, but I was, but I, the descendant sounded similar to the stuff that I wrote and what I like. And, uh, and I saw a picture of them and it was the one with Doug and Ray in the band and they're sitting on a slide at a playground. That's, so, in, that's in Simi Valley, California, where I grew up. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Well, I saw the picture and they did, and they weren't scary. I was like, those people. No, they're not, no, they're not scared. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't like, you know, I'm going to go find the misfits and Doyle's going to beat me up or something. So I uh, said, well, they're not scary. I really like their music. And in my mind, as a kid from a small town near Buffalo, the fact that they had records and that I had heard of them and they were on the other side of the country, I, in my mind, I thought, wow, they must be doing great, you know? <laughs> you know? I really did. So I thought, well, I'll go out there and they probably know people. There's probably a, a community. I knew that that the Minutemen, who are, are one of my all-time favorite bands, were yes. in Pedro. And I was like, I looked at the map and I was like, uh, so I was like, yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll just go to Los Angeles. And yeah, I got in my car. I, I worked a bunch of jobs, earned some money got the shit kicked out of me and I got some money from that. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, I, I probably deserved it. I was really, I, I, I stopped, I got an apartment in Hollywood, um, which is nowhere near the South Bay. No, it's, <laughs> it's really far away. But I was from, and I just, it's where my car stopped, you know? And yeah. so I got an apartment in Hollywood and then started, I drove out uh, out to Lamita, drove out to the South Bay and uh, they were on tour, but I met Tony Lombardo. Well, the funny thing is that Tony Lombardo, they had, the, the descendants had sent this newsletter and on it said, our old bass player, Tony is looking for a singer. Yeah. Apparently he'd been looking for a singer for 50 years and they kept saying it, but I didn't know. I thought, Oh, I won the jackpot because he's a rock star too, you know, and he's a mailman. And so I, 
<laughs> I called him and I said, hey, this is when I was in Buffalo. It was actually at a payphone outside a descendant show at the at the uh, VFW hall. Uh, anyway, all this minutia. I'll get anyway. I called and Tony answers the phone. He's like, hello. He has a high voice. And I said, hey, I heard you need a singer. And he's like, yeah. Uh. And I said, well, I'm, I'm a singer. And he's like, okay, well, you want to meet? And I said, well, he said, where do you live? And I said, Buffalo. And he said, New York? And I said, yeah. And he said, call me when you get to Los Angeles. So I got to Hollywood and I called him and I'm like, hey, it's Scott. He's like, the guy from Buffalo? And I said, yeah. And he said, uh, what do you want? You know? And I said, I'm here. And he said, here, here. And I was like, I'm in Los Angeles. I live in Los Angeles. Your, your prayers are answered. You know, so I did it. Here I am. Yeah. So I met him up there at the DCH and, I, and Descendants Central Headquarters. And it was became all Central Headquarters was in the media. It was a series of there was it was a, a office space complex and yeah. they had two offices. One, they built a carpet cave in for practice in. And here's the thing about that. I boy, I get off track. It doesn't matter. We're having a this is this is fine. We're having a conversation. Yeah, you know, stream of consciousness. I had a stroke, you know. Anyway, so um <laughs> so what was I saying? Oh, so they had this carpet cave, you know, you, you know, when you build a carpet cave, you build a box inside the room, right? Mm -hmm. And then you their carpet cave was really good. They had like eight layers of carpet on the top and everything. You build a box so that you have air between the wall and the carpet so that when the sound gets out, it still has this deadening air before it, and it worked great. And then they had double locking doors with carpet on them to, to shut the whole thing in. In there, there was no air, it was really hot, but, but you could practice and nobody yeah. called the cops. And so the thing about it is behind there, there was a bathroom and the area was, uh, I'm gonna say seven feet. And then up to the ceiling and the carpet cave was here bathroom behind you right there they had three bunks for uh uh stefan carl and like bug face or whatever and uh they were behind <laughs> they slept in that thing behind the carpet cave uh no air no nothing and that think about it there was no exit anywhere if that yeah. carpet had caught fire and every night they slept there like a when i when i joined they said you can have that bunk and i was like fuck that i'm sleeping in the front and i slept on top of bill's drum stuff i built a shelf over top of his drum stuff and slept in the front i was like if there's a fire i'm fucking out of right. here i might go wake him up but if the fire's bad i'm good luck fellas but anyway so where were we <laughs> Oh, we were, we're, we're talking about you showed up. You, you, you showed up in. Uh, oh, in I showed up in the media. Yeah, you went down there. You now, played. I, uh, you played in a band with Tony. Yeah, and, and Frank was. Uh, well, Frank was in Three Car Pilot, but yeah, I played with Tony, and we went on tour opening for the Descendants, and I was in like, oh my god, I can't believe it. I came out here thinking maybe I could get into music, and I'm actually on tour with the Descendants. This is crazy, and we went as far as. Uh, as far as Dallas, and I was so like a couple of sister. Weeks. Yeah, and it was like I was like, oh my god, this is going so fast, you know. I quit my quit my job. I was working at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, and I wanted to go on tour, and they said no, and I said okay, I quit. So, uh, got there, three car pileup. All we did was fight. <laughs> well. Not we. Two members fought like oh. rah, 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 constantly, and we we didn't have a van. We took my car that I bought from my grandma, following the descendants van, and we got we got to Houston, and and uh, our part was done, and we had to drive back to Los Angeles, and I said, you know what, fellas fuck this. And I, I gave him my keys and I said, take my car, make sure you park it at DCH. I'm going to stay with my sister for a while. 
And I, I broke down. I cried in front of Bill and everything. Like, <laughs> and I really wanted to be a musician, you know, really bad. And, and all of a sudden, like, it seemed like, well, I don't have a job. I'm going back. <sighs> you know, I got back to, and I fell apart. Bill, and Bill got out of the van and hugged me. Guy hadn't said two words to me and, you know, and he gave me a big hug. And I was like, this is really embarrassing because I was all snot and everything. I really was like, the dream is dying right here in my sister's, you know. Uh, but <laughs> I didn't have any money. I didn't have a job. And I was like, what do I do now? And I said, well, I'm going back to Los Angeles. I want to play music. I still have uh, the rest of the month of rent paid for. I probably have enough for another month. Maybe I can find a job. And I went back, uh, and then, then I was really dying, and I went down to my mailbox, because back in the day, you checked your mail all the time for letters and stuff. Yes. Uh, remember those days? Oh, yeah. It was yeah. very exciting. Like, what am I going to get today? Oh, my God. This is so exciting. Oh. I could get a package from Italy. Oh. Or who the fuck knows? So my, brother, my brother, when he was in, he went to West Point, and when he was at West Point, and he'd open his mailbox, if there was no mail in it, he'd go, <laughs> like a bunch of bats were flying out. <laughs> I always thought that was funny. But anyway, so I went to my mailbox and there was a check there from when I got the shit beat out of me. And it got me another month and a, and a, a rent and a bunch of groceries. And I'll tell you what, when I got beat up, I was coming out of a bar that's right across the street from here. I was really drunk. And I, some guy had this neon blue coat. I still remember the coat. And I said, hey, man, that's a mighty blue jacket. And they kept walking and I kept walking. And then they made this loop and came back around. And they're like, what are you bagging on my friend's jacket? And I was, and I was like, it's just really blue. I was just saying it was blue. What is? They beat the crap out of me. So when I got that money in Los Angeles, I immediately walked down to Hollywood Boulevard. And I was going, that's a mighty red jacket. That's a mighty green jacket, you know, hoping I'd get it again. But nobody beat me up. That's actually a lie. I didn't do that. But so. <laughs> well, how did you, well, well, how did you end up? Uh, so the band Flame of Frank and Tony was. Uh, okay. Yeah. Was that, that was done. But because of that opening for the Descendants, that meant you had a relationship with someone. I had a relationship. Yeah. And and on the on the the on the final tour, uh, Stefan and I became real, real close on that trip. We had a good time. And I told him I was drunk <laughs> and I said, you guys are blowing it. And he's like, what do you mean? And I said, your new singer, he sucks. And I didn't even, I didn't know if he sucked or anything. Right. Just the principle of it. It should be. Yeah, it wasn't me. Right? And I was like, you guys are fucking up. You don't want that guy. And I didn't really know Dag Nasty. I didn't know if he, you know, and I was like, that's you're crazy you should, i live right next i live in my car in your parking lot you know because i at that you should pick me or whatever you yeah should, you guys are blowing it you know but anyway where was i oh so i came back and the 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 girl that worked in the senate's office blanche she's like you're a singer and i said yeah and she said you want to sing in my band and i said what's your band and and she said uh it's uh, called three car pileup or maybe maybe we didn't have a name yet yeah i don't think we had a name so what we did was we all got together and picked the worst name ever but anyway uh <laughs> three car pileup what a stupid name for a man <laughs> anyway so um she i tried out and they had a great drummer Paul Kelly, he was amazing. And uh, this guy, Curtis, who owned Peanut Records, he was, and so I started doing that. And and I met Frank because Frank was living in the office uh, and I was living in my car, all in the descendants. <laughs> nice. <laughs> my life is, geez. Living on the edge. I, I moved furniture during the day. I'm, I'm going off on another tangent. I worked at Redondo Band and Storage. Paul got me the job. I'm a good moving man. That's one thing I was always, I could fall back and I could drive a truck. So uh, so I, I would I would work uh, 
room and furniture all day. Then I come back and I have my, you know, in the back, I put all my dirty clothes in the wheel wells, the, you know, not the wheel wells, the, in, in front of the back seat, you know, and then right. I pull the seat over it and make a big mattress and I'd sleep in my car. And I got roused by the cops all the time. And they say, are, are you living in this car? And I said, no, I just drove across. I remember one night I said, the cops were really, really dicks, really dicks in Lomita. Oh, if you ever, if you ever talk to the, the descendants guys, ask them about how the cops were there. Cause there's a million stories, but anyway, this guy, he shines his light in and he's like, are you living in this car? And I said, no, no, I just drove across the country. And he goes, well, I drove across the country. Once, my car didn't look like this. And I said, well, congratulations. And, and he put me in the car. He put me in the cop car and I sat there for two hours. But anyway, just because I said congratulations. Anyway, I'm not sure why I told that story. Where were we? Because you're, oh. leading, up to, you're leading up to talking about how you ended up going. Frank's in the office, sleeping. I'm in the car, sleeping. And we became good friends. Well, actually, one night Bill came and knocked on the window and he's like, why are you sleeping in your car? And I said, because I don't have a house. <laughs> and he said, well, come sleep in the office. And I went and slept in the office with Frank for a couple of days. And Frank talked all night, all night. So I went and started sleeping in my car again. But uh, <laughs> all night, he's just, and he had a really, really high voice. And I, I love Frank. I love Frank. He was, he was a cuckoo. Like in, he was just awesome, you know, very interesting, very, and he, but, but he talked all night. So I would go and sleep in the car. Anyway, we became friends and then he wanted to play in three car pileup. And he said, you know, you're the best singer I know. I want to be in the band. And I was like, Frank Nevada in my band. Fuck. Yeah. So he played for a while, but he would play kind of whatever he felt like playing. And sometimes it just, wasn't working so i said frank why don't we why don't we like figure out what you want to play like and we would sit and practice for hours just the two of us and then the next practice with a full band he'd go back and play the same shit again okay and so eventually eventually blanche was like hey i don't know what to do here because and, and so I had to tell Frank, it's not working. I had to tell like one of my heroes of all time that it's not working it, and it fucking sucked. But he didn't, he didn't uh, hold it against me at all. He, he did when I first said it, <laughs> but he didn't. <laughs> uh, Frank was a, yeah. Anyway, so we recorded No Traffic, Mary and I think M Box in three car pileup and it's funny uh i was working in the office and bill called and i was doing a terrible job terrible job and so i was afraid you know the phone would ring and it would be bill and he was like where are our fucking t-shirts you're doing a terrible job i don't know why i took the job because i didn't have a car anymore so i couldn't really get anywhere and in los angeles yeah oh take those yeah. t-shirts to the printer okay I'm going to go ride the bus. I'll throw them in my rickshaw and tow them over there. So I did a terrible job. And so the phone rang and I'm like, oh, fuck. It's Bill. And he said, Scott, uh, Smalley quit. Do you want to be our singer? And I had been practicing with uh, with Three Car Pilot for a really long time. And I said, oh, no, I can't. And he is silence. And he's like, what the fuck? You live like a filthy animal to play music and make records and go on tour. And he said, do you, sh this makes no sense to me. And I said, well, yeah, but these guys have all worked so hard and I just, I can't just jump ship. Yeah. I, you just wanted to be, you, you, you wanted to be loyal. You're like, yeah. And, and he's like, well, I'll tell you what he goes, you know, as soon as we get back, you'll make a record and go on tour, which is what you say you want to do. He said, I'll call you tomorrow and I'll ask you again. <laughs> and, I, and he said, and then I'm never going to ask you again. And he hung up. Oh, and that's, I, that's actually very, that's brilliant. Yeah. And he called, when you call back, what'd you say? Well, I called my, it's, I called my grandma. I called my, 
everybody. And I said, this is my dilemma. And everybody was like, what the fuck? Are you crazy? Just do it. Yeah, just do it. You've, you've paid your dues, you know? Yeah. So I did. And uh, the rest, as they say. is history. Yeah. So how soon, after, how soon after you joined did you guys record the All Royals Revenge record? They came right back, right back. And that's why that's why the Three Car Pileup songs are on there, because yeah. I didn't have any songs. Right. You know, and even that bothered me. I, I told them, I, I remember, I went, I told them I have to quit. And uh, uh, the guys in all asked me to be the singer. And once again, I started crying. Uh, and did, somebody hug, did somebody from the band hug you this time? Nobody hugged me. Oh. No. I think they gave me the finger. Uh, and then I said, and I'm also taking the songs. <laughs> so, yeah. And it was funny because Bill recorded Three Car Pile Up. And one day I was sitting out front smoking a cigarette. I used to smoke. Don't hold it against me. I quit almost 30 years ago or whatever. But uh, I, I smoked. Yeah, we all did yeah. Anyway, so I was having a cigarette. Bill comes up and he, I remember he looked at me and he goes, hey, Scott, who wrote Mary? And I, and I said, uh, I did. And he went, okay. And he walked away. And then after that, you know, he asked me to be the singer. So I don't know. He liked the song, I assume. But it worked out, you know. Immediately we were on tour 200 shows a year and the way the way we lived back in Lamita tour was better. You know, we had money, we had food, you know. Oh, is this so this is before you uh, ended up moving out to um, you moved uh, Missouri? Yeah. yeah, we moved to Missouri. Yeah. Partway partway through it was like uh no, we were living in that office space and and the thing about it, it became a party place too. There was so many people showing up, and I would have lost my mind after about a month of that. Not me. I was way into it. I loved it, and that was the problem, you know. Uh, yeah. Well, I was um, young. I was young, and like now, I would be like, "This is horrible." But back then, it was like, "Oh wow, you know, this is crazy. We're having so much fun." But a lot of touring bands would show up, and we didn't have room for them, and they'd sleep all over the place, and it was like. That got a little. That got a little annoying because none of them are hot girls, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, you're hot girls. Hot girls can come, but <laughs> sometimes they just don't. I would say, like, go get some hot girls and bring them with you, or you can't come. But yeah. Um, can I ask a, a question about the all the way saves period? Because that's yeah. like the most um. That's the most out there record in a way, and, and um. I think it's kind of interesting because like the stuff I liked the most about all was the quirkiness factor or the fact yeah. that back then Stefan he's writing some pretty crazy stuff and I always thought his guitar playing was really not just the black flag Gregan sort of thing but there was this band I always liked called Voivod. I love Voivod. I got, yeah. su I got super drunk at one of their apartments one night and I told the guy from, remember this band Men Without Hats? They yeah. Safety Dance? I told him. Ivan. What's that? What'd you say? I think his name is Ivan. Oh, I don't know. He was sitting on the couch, though, and, and one of the guys, I think it was the roadie from Voivod, goes, hey, that's the guy from Men Without Hats. And there was music playing, and I sat down next to him, and I said, you know, you can dance if you want to. <laughs> and Leave he, your friends behind. And he, he looked at me like, yeah, good one, dude. And that, so that was that. But anyway, that's my Voivod story. That's a good story. All, all the beer exploded in the, in the, we left it in the freezer too long. I remember that. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> well, well, I, I was going to say there was this, you know, you know, very out there, quirky kind of, uh, I mean, not just like the way you write music, but all those guys at that time, it was this very, uh, you know, his guitar playing reminded me of people like Voivod or De or yeah. You know, um, and then you know, obviously Carl and Bill are very you know good players, and there's some really strange arrangements to all these weird songs, and they all kind of fit. Well, and then, 
I oh, after that it seemed like the quirkiness factor, which I thought was the big selling point for uh, the band. Yeah. Um, it kind of went sort of sideways and kept going. Like it's still kind of there. Agreed. But, agreed. No, and like, were well, you a fan of, all, of the? Were you? you yeah. Were a fan of the quirkiness, and I'm sure like what Stepin brought, maybe uh, like Percolator is a good record, but that's kind of like you said in the. Uh, the film and Jimmy View, that's where the conflict started. The disconnect yeah. started. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I liked the quirkiness, but like for my part of that record, um, besides prison, what were the other ones? Frog, right? Was Frog? Yeah. Frog, yeah. Uh, Cyclops, Crawdad. Okay. I wrote those all on piano because I couldn't play guitar. They were older than the stuff that was on Revenge. Yeah, but nobody I played with could play my songs because they a bunch of punk rockers and I wrote them on piano and so that's why like goofy crap like crawdad and stuff showed up on that one because it was all piano so then we went back to the next the next record and the only thing that I wrote on piano was Charligan you know uh, so it you know I think that that that's a big reason that record was kooky like that. Plus, we were super into No Means No and stuff like that at the time. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So when then we when when we went to Percolator, some of my favorite stuff is on Percolator, but it's something like Breathe. I love Breathe. I think that's a great great song, and I like. Yeah. Uh, but I also like. Things like uh, the thing that I always thought the band was about, the thing that, that nobody else did was stuff like uh, some of like the Carl stuff, like uh, uh, what is it? What is that? Uh, everything is broken, don't you cry? It's not right. Anyway, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, can't say. Is that what it's yeah, called? Can't, can't say. say. Stuff like that. And I thought, yeah. nobody can do that but us. Why don't we just do that? If we're going to, you know, stick to the weird stuff, but and that, you know, and I thought, well, we're getting, we're getting a little too rocky for me. I, right. I, 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 I really liked the cookies, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. I thought, I thought, I thought it was super catchy. Like, what? I did Wonder Bread on that record. I like that song, you know? You know, she's made that money on a little Wonder Bread. You know? Yeah. And um, did did the punk rock explosion happen before you you left the band? Because um, I I always had a very I mean, maybe it's because of my age or whatever, or because I already went through Black Flag and and right. weird rock music, and, you know, whether or the Big Boys or this or that. Oh, the Big Boys, Meat Puppet, Puppet. Meat Puppets. You know, I liked I liked yeah. a lot of the early SST stuff. I loved Who's Who Do up yeah. until a certain point. Um, um, it wasn't a giant. Hey, you know, you're doing those those drawings of things where people you're running away from people. Yeah. I was not a giant Husker Du fan. Well, they're not for everybody, you know. Nothing's for everybody. I just wanted to throw mine out there. Okay, well, so, I, well, thanks for letting me know that you weren't into Husker Du. That's okay. Oh. I didn't. I wasn't not into them. I just wasn't. It was that was I wasn't like, oh my god, these guys are so great. I was like. Hmm. Well, this is most. That's mostly about just not getting certain things and not saying it sucks. Like, for, like you brought up the Clash. I have a lot of respect for the Clash, but to this very fucking day, I just don't. You know, right? I, I, I like literally everybody else out of that world, whether it was the Sex Pistols album or the Ramones or X-Ray Specs. You know, we yeah. we watched that polystyrene film. Which Damn, was cool. yeah. I love all that Stranglers. I love the Stranglers. And the one band I just the never. Black White record. Ooh, I love that record. Well, Oh yeah, yeah. Like that that's their best one. But um the clash, I, you know, and I get, no, that's just some some shit just doesn't it doesn't tickle you, it doesn't hit that's you. That's all right. I mean there's some songs I really like by them, but uh, all in all, I'm like, I, I just no. forget. It. So that's and, all that's all that was about. So that's me and me and the jam. I can't stand the jam. I can't I, I hate like, it. I like a couple of jam songs. Yeah, but, people uh, get furious with me about that. And it's like cool. I don't like his I don't like his voice. I, I like the song Billy Hunt. That's the only one I like by them. And that's because <laughs> You know that song? Because he's got that 
Billy Hunt, Billy Hunt, Billy, 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 Billy Hunt. And I'm like, that's cool. I like that. But The Jam, um, Art think... School, In the City, and there's a couple other ones. And then a few of the later ones. I, oh, that's pretty good. Oh, that song where he basically sings about stuff happening in a the neighborhood. They're no style counts. That's entertainment. I hate that song. Like, no, so the no. guy's mowing his lawn and the lady's got a bicycle and that's entertainment. Oh, I hate that song. But the really reds, the band really red have a great song called Entertainment, and Gang of Four have an awesome album called uh, Entertainment. Anyway, I'm geeking out here. See what's but, what's happening? What's happening is I'm rub, you're I'm contagiously, yeah, you're becoming in. I'm showing off my musical my musical taste here. Okay. Well, do you like do you like Popo Pies and all that stuff like that? That's you okay. Know? I think they're great. Um, I think it's funny that he did truck in five million different ways. It was really truck in. Uh, what's that one song? Fun. Um, um, da, 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 da. Timothy Leary. Timothy yeah. Leary. Yeah. I know, I you like, uh, shit. Now I'm losing. Do you like Snake Finger? I don't know anything about. I know the name. Is that, is he related to the residents? Was he in the residents? It was all. I don't know. I don't know the history, but it's all part and parcel of that stuff up there, like the Ralph Records crap, like to see yeah. them and shit. Yeah. That's good stuff. Anyway, I I derailed you. What, where were you no, heading? Uh, we were just talking about the quirky factor of all was a good selling point, and um, and I think I asked you about whether or not the punk rock explosion. The reason I brought that up is because, like, by the time stuff like and it has nothing to do with anybody, because I don't know any of those people like on a personal level, but uh, you know, like when Green Day and all those bands started. Yeah. Um, when, when, when this new universe sort of was created by accident where people could suddenly make this sort of style of music that would find this audience of you know thousands upon thousands of people that um, could you know be this really big thing I didn't really respond really well to it I was probably being kind of a dick but I also just kind of thought well I already like the descendants and all and I was always really surprised and maybe the quirkiness factor or the fact that all your songs with four different people were all very different, which I thought was like a, a real strength. Yeah. But for that kind of world. Yeah, I was they used to like it when it was the Beatles, you know, not that we're the Beatles, but used to be you could have all different kinds of stuff. And then all of a sudden your sound had to be homogenous or we would get reviews that say there's just too much different kind of crap on here. It's, it's hard to listen to all the way through. Which I like. But also, you, you guys probably got a lot of, um, probably a lot of other musicians enjoyed all, especially um, during your your time as the singer. I'm sure you've heard yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, we were, we were a music, like the guys from No Means No would show up, at our show, especially Rob, you know, and that, that's very different. And I think that they, I think he just liked to watch the, the playing, you know, because. What's, what's your favorite No Means No record? Wrong. I just love that. Like, uh, do you like that? Do you like the record Sex Mad at all? I love Sex Mad. But the thing about Sex Mad is, is it's got some incredibly bright moments where I go, this is them at their best. And then it's got some stuff that I'm not like the most consistent. You know? The most consistent one for me is wrong. Yeah. Wrong, wrong's really good. Yeah. And it's one that I like can put in when I'm when I'm running or whatever and uh listen to all the way through and not have to I just you know. And that song, The Tower, when I when that comes on, I feel like I could beat anybody up on earth. <laughs> the Tower. <laughs> Freaking love that song. It swings the largest dick of like any. It's like, God. I just. I like, I, I think the one song I always skipped and then I discovered it was my favorite one was the last song, Life. I think Life in Hell. Yeah. That song is really good. Yeah. I'm going to have to listen to that record again today. Oh, so just, sorry. Um, so, um, so you were talking about the. I was talking about how I was always, you know, again, I was. I, you know, I'll be honest. When all that stuff was coming out, and I was doing good by Harry and stuff, I didn't hear much of it. I, 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 I'm, I don't, I'm not a Green Day fan. I think it's a lot of people know that. Uh, it's like. Are you famous for not being a Green Day fan? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, I, you've said much. Yeah. Well, I'm not famous for it. I'm not famous, but. But it's it's an it's a running gag. People Got it. send me pictures of Green Day and stuff. I just don't like Green Day. I don't want to get into it, but yeah. I just don't like that band. But kind of all of it back then, I thought, you know, I'm old. So 
you know, when I hit Los Angeles, I missed all the best stuff. You know, I remember I went to Jack Brewer's wedding, Jack Brewer from Sacrament Trust. Trust. Shortly after I got out there, I wasn't in all yet or anything. Jack just practiced at our practice space and he, he's a really interesting fella. And <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. He seems like a really interesting fella. He is, He and he would hang out and have these long, we'd have these nice talk because I was living in, in that little practice space for a while. Yeah. So anyway, I went I went with Bob Fitz, you know, Fitzer from uh, the bass player. He was the bass player for- uh, The most became, amazing bass player of all time. We Became Snakes. He was in the band during the We Became Snakes era. Yeah. And he was, a, he, he and I, we went to the, we went to the wedding together and uh, I was at this wedding and Greg Ginn came in and Mike Watt came in and uh, Universal Congress, Joe Biza played. And I was sitting there going, holy shit. It was like, for me, it was like Hollywood or something. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God, you know? And, yeah. and so like, I missed the boat on all of that. Like when I came in, I was like, punk's dead, but that's cool. You know what I mean? I mean, cause I don't really care about punk at all. I, it's to me, punk schmuck. I don't give a, I don't care. I don't care about hardcore. I don't care. You know, if I like your band, I like it. If I don't, I listen to freaking everything. I listen, to, right. I listen to very, very little of all kinds of music, you know, because most stuff is redundant or, or, you know, insipid and unoriginal of something that was really good. You know, like, oh yeah, sure. Like one guy, like, oh, that's the guy I listen to. For if I listen to, like, I'm I like bluegrass a lot. I don't like any. I like Flat and Scruggs, you know, and and uh, uh, Doc Watson and crap like that. So basically, as far as that goes, I was sitting with these people in this, right? And and when I came along, it's like, okay, well, I don't really, I don't really care about punk rock. I just like music, you know. Uh, and so when the whole next punk thing, plus what's punk? If Green Day's punk and the feeders are punk, I mean, that's a, that's a broad swath that, you know, the, the term, the term punk kind of means for what are you wearing, you know? And so. Well, pretty much it was, um, you know, like I, I'm sure you were probably familiar with uh, the magazine Maximum Rock and Roll. <laughs> yes, I was. Well, yeah. you know, like, you know how, like, uh, they didn't like us, boy. Well, at one point, they were a very pivotal magazine when they first came out, and it was when stuff was still kind of fresh. But, like, yeah. what ended up happening is you just, I bring them up because they printed our really, writer. <laughs> what was that? They printed our writer once because they thought we were asking too much of the scene because we wanted, uh, because you were rock stars. Yeah. Because we wanted, we wanted, we wanted towels and, you know, when we would write up our writer, we would uh, sit in the office and laugh and write stuff up. And every time we got a contract, they'd take the writer and they'd no, no, no. And they sent it back and we'd show up anyway. You know, it's just a thing, right? And so we asked for, one of the things we asked for was food. You know, please have food for us. And that's because you drive all night, you know, you, whatever. You don't know the town. You don't know where to eat. You don't know. You're, hung you're hungry. It can be a pizza, you know. Just can we have food? And they were they they just they printed our rider. Uh, the guy Jesse from Operation Ivy picketed our show. There was a big, <laughs> yeah yeah. Well, see the reason I bring up Maximum Rock and Roll is because even though they helped a lot of people and and um, I had a relationship with a couple of those people and they're all really nice. There was yeah. this weird sort of. Uh, we're going to define what this undefinable thing is. Yeah. These are the same people that, um, well, I, I don't know for sure, but remember when people first got into punk rock, they acted like they couldn't like anything they liked before that. Yeah. I never was like that. So I, I, just, was, I, was just like, I was just like more music for me, you know, yeah. that, this is great. One you of know, the first, but, one of the first, one of the first interactions I ever had with Bill Stevenson, uh, I was sitting in their office and I had a Walkman, remember Walkman? And yeah. he walked by and he goes, what are you listening to? Right? Because I guess he could sort of hear it. 
and he was checking to see, and, and I was listening to ZZ Top. And I said, I'm listening. Yeah. I'm listening. I think the song was just got paid, you know, something like that. And he, I said, ZZ, ZZ Top. Like, and he said, yeah, we're not supposed to like that. And I said, <laughs> And, well, and, he, and, and, he, and he just laughed and I laughed because we both like ZZ Top, you know. But yeah, anyway. I, I, well, you know, like that, that kind of mentality of uh, somebody from a not great band picketing at your band's uh, show or whatever, you know, like there were so many rules. Punk rock had so many rules and there were so yeah. many gatekeepers. And this is way before like the internet. Especially now, Northern but, California back then, but yeah. Yeah. So, you know, like when I think about that stuff, I just think about Maximum Rock and Roll's letter section, which was like a bunch of people trying to define the undefinable. And it still goes on. And it's been like, what, what, what 50 years? Right. Well, of I mean, I mean it, it, all it is, 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 is a, another label for the counterculture, right? I mean, hippies, hippies hated the cops. Hippies started trouble. Uh, look at Little Richard, a, 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 a gay, basically transvestite a uh, uh, screaming black person in the South in, right. in the fucking 50s. There's nothing more punk rock than that, you know? No. So no. I just always thought it was just trite. You know, I don't give a shit about punk rock. Well, it, it, and it's, it's, also, it's also just like a uniform. And also most punk rockers don't actually like music anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Well, know? then I remember early on, you know, when I started getting into it, and that might not be early on, but the early 80s, like, you know, when I... Uh, well, that was my that was my time when would, too. When we would go to a show, there would be a long-haired guy standing next to a skinhead guy standing next to a dude with a mohawk and some girl in jeans and 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 we'd all be listening to it. Nobody and nobody cared. Nobody gave a fuck. And the and the, and then the band you'd be like, see some hardcore band like when I went to see the Minutemen in Ohio, there was a real hardcore band. And then the Minutemen came out and they played. Uh, that shit they play and it was totally different and everybody's like i like both these bands you know it was, yeah. so you know the 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 reemergence of punk rock in the early 90s or whatever to me was just like it was just more of the packaging of something and 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 the toning it down honestly like you know you wouldn't you're not sure. going to hear half japanese on the sure. radio you're going to hear i think uh it's Yeah, I just kind of think, I just think, well, you know, I think the people that were a part of that, they were like, wow, what's going on? We can be a part of this. Anyway, the reason why I brought that up is because I, I, again, couldn't figure out why people didn't, you know, like, well, well, these guys were doing stuff that even though it doesn't sound just like that, they were doing this for all the years, people were not. Yeah, well, but you know, whatever. First of all, the Descendants, when they did it, it was just far too soon. People weren't, people making the adjustment. Like to me, Milo goes to college is basically flawless. I fucking love that record. I love it I the still, first time I heard it. Yep. It's my favorite Descendants record. It's the thing. Milo's voice was so snotty and cool. And then they had the melodies, but it wasn't like pop punk, which doesn't make any sense. That's like black, white. It, how does that work? You know, right. you know, uh, but it was just, but I didn't listen to it because it was punk rock. I listened to it because it was cool, you know? Yeah, yeah, same here. Same here. I wasn't like, oh, this is punk. So, you know. Yeah, I, can I, I listen? Hey, fellas, can I listen to this, you know? And then I noticed at a certain point, things started happening within the scene, the scene, which I also hate. Uh, the scene. Yeah, where there was groups of people that hung out within each other and they didn't get along. And then all of a sudden you had like the, the New York hardcore and those guys beat everybody up that didn't act right. And then you had the skinheads down South and they were beating people up. And it was like, yeah, I was yeah. about the music. I, I was going, about hey, the music and, and enjoying yeah. the music. And right. that was it. You know, and sometimes I, I go, wasn't, I wasn't there. I wasn't there because. No. But. Well, it's like uh, how the, the toy dolls became an oi band because of the way they looked, but they like, Olga's like, we, we're not an oi band. We're goofy. We sing Nelly the Elephant and shit. But then guys with braces and boots come in and it's like, oh, cool. You fucked up our show now because you turned it into something stupid as usual. You know, that's what humans do. People ruin everything. 
That's what my shirts say. And uh, so as soon as you apply a label to something, then people try to figure out what the fucking label means. And then they go, hey, I'm in charge of what this means over here because I'm super cool. And so are my <laughs> friends. And you're like, you all suck. We, we all suck. Just pick a song and like it or don't. And don't even pick a band. Pick a song. You know, don't tax yourself. Don't, uh, if a band has one good song, like, like Miley Cyrus, Party in the USA, I like that song. I, I crank it. I don't care. But whatever, you know. So people just have always, always needed, to, needed to be told. I agree. What, what to be a part of. And people, people all want to feel like, people want to feel special without putting in any effort you know that's where racism comes from hey just the way i am i don't have to do shit and i'm awesome and you're not you know and it's the same thing with cultural things and everything else and you just go like you fucking lazy people listen to shit. and you well, fuck and you fucking cowards you cowards if you don't like black flag say i don't like black flag and that's fucking fine you know but right. well it, 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 people have People have these illusions of being different, you know, and that's, and, and it's when you're so younger, ironic. yeah. well, when you, when you're younger and you're getting into these things, your identity is really important as far as that stuff goes. So I understand all that stuff, but you right. know, I, I Absolutely. know people that are, that are our age that still feel that way. And it's just kind of like, man, I, I don't want to be 55 years old, worried about keeping up with what people that are 30 years right. younger than me are doing. You know, there's, you know, like I'm okay with, how the aging process goes for better or for worse you know right. and, and i'm not above finding my my group of primates i i'm i'm totally down with it i get it uh yeah. and it can be it can be it can be an empowering thing and it can be a a socially relevant thing that that, that changes things and it can be we used to I, when i worked at headhunters in uh in austin we did a, a big rockabilly night and yeah it's not my thing and uh, and like they'd all come in and they'd all have the wedge haircuts and girls that look like Rosie the Riveter and all that shit. And I would go, this is really silly. But then I was like, no, you're being a dick. These people, they're, they're, they're enjoying themselves. And then I would work festivals. And there was one with, it was, a what is that called? House music or whatever. What are the kid, the youngsters called? The, and everybody's on, on Molly and dancing around and shit. And I had to work that. And I, at first I was like, God, the guys, if you would have told me when I was a kid, there'd be a guy on stage with a record player and everybody would be dancing to the guy with a record player. I would tell you that's fucking crazy. Uh, but then as it went on and it goes, and all the lights come on and all these people that are with pacifiers are dancing. And I'm like going, I can totally see why they're having fun. And I'm being a fucking stick in the mud. Not my thing, but more power to you. Just don't wreck your car on the way home, you know? Yeah. Uh, so on the one hand, I go, yeah. But then on the other hand, I think part of humanity's worst impulses are tied to our absolute need to belong. And not just to belong, but to belong to the best. So you go, that's why things like religion and uh, uh, nationalism and racism is all like, people going i'm i'm awesome no matter what i'm awesome and people who don't aren't me i have to be better than them because if i'm not then i'm not awesome so yeah. you just find a way to go who can i who can i blame everything on and i and still be awesome it's a super lazy mentality and i yeah. see that i see that in the punk rock community sure sure well, you know, people have these illusions of being different, so they think all that stuff really matters. But the, the, the other thing about all that stuff is the person that really suffers in that equation is always the person that's the individual. Yeah. But that's the person that has the to actual be punk rocker. Rock. Yeah. The, the one that, that if, the, if, if the ethos is anything, the person that's getting beat up in the uh, alley that still comes to the shows is the punk rock, you know? And you know what? To bring full circle, I think, I think that's why my thing with my nylon string guitar goes over sometimes because like I come out opening for Pennywise and nobody knows who I am and I've got this acoustic guitar and they go, 
that takes balls, <laughs> you know, to come out at this punk rock show with that guitar and sing Maria's an Easter egg, you know? And, you know, I, 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 I know there's people going, yeah, what is this crap? I want, I came here to watch, you know, Pennywise, but guys with, guys with black baseball hats. Yeah. But there's backwards, a bunch of backwards baseball hats. Yeah, exactly. And then, but there's a bunch of people going, Hey, this is pretty cool. This guy came out and did this. I'm going to give it a listen. And, and it surprised me. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, so we, we brought it full circle back to Chihuahua and Buffalo. Yeah. On Right. Um, <laughs> that was like a really nice tie in for like uh, me asking you a few more questions and letting you go because it's been about an hour. But uh, thanks again for letting me talk to you. Yeah, I hope I didn't, I hope I didn't lead you astray, lead the conversation. Oh, no, this is great, actually. Actually, you know, like, some of these chats, you know, I have to uh, edit a lot, usually because I'm saying something stupid, but which I luckily didn't do this time. But this is a very nice stream of consciousness kind of conversation that seems like it requires no editing. So I thank you for that. Oh, wow. Well, that's how I rule. Stream of consciousness is my middle name. Right. I, can, I can come in to, to ask, you know, if I can use the bathroom. And an hour later, I'm telling you about my grandma. So, and I yeah. pissed myself, you know, so... Right, right. Um, well, you know, I never even got to asking you about Goodbye Harry or the Pavers or your other projects, but we'll do it uh, again. We'll do it again. So why don't you just, if you don't mind, um, if there's a way that people want to check out your new record and all your stuff, can you tell me through this thing where they should go? Uh, I wish Janet was in here because I don't uh so I, uh, I'm on Facebook. There's Scott Reynolds Art and Music and Art, I think. Music. Shit. God damn it. I'm not prepared. I'll do uh, some I'll do some research and I'll make sure I, I, I know. I think I know where to go. Okay. So, yeah, help me, help me on, out. Okay, well, you're on Bandcamp too. What's that? There's a, band, on, there's a yeah. Bandcamp. Yeah, you can look me up on Bandcamp and I'm... And if you put in Scott Reynolds, there's a, there's a bunch of Scott Reynolds who are musicians, but for some reason I got in under the wire and I'm, I'm the Scott Reynolds on Bandcamp. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I'm getting better at this stuff, but mostly because I surround myself with smart people, you know, it's all about connecting the dots. That's pretty much it. But, um, yeah, well, we'll ask you next time about all that other stuff, but, uh, Hey, thanks a lot. Eh? It was nice to actually. Yeah. yeah.